So this is the first slide where we wanted to say that two industrial partners are involved in this particular program. Now, the research themes, what we do in the University of Central Lancashire has been divided as a pie chart. And if you look the color of those pie chart, I have actually divided in terms of the percentage of research carry in that particular areas. So if you go for health diagnostics, we do work on nanomedicines. That's why we are here today. We do develop nanoparticles for drug delivery. And also we are interested to attach biomolecules in the nano materials and then see if they can sense for specific diagnostics purpose. And then we have a blue area where we look for environmental science like how the nanoparticles can be used for say water purification. Similarly, you can think of you know, removing some sort of contaminants from soils. And if you go for the green one, we also heavily involved on research on catalysis, biofuel. My background is physical chemistry on porous materials and how those porous materials could be useful as a support for catalysis. And that again involved industrial partners. In the past, I worked with ICA Cinetics, who is now Johnson Matthew, they do develop a lot of industrial catalysis. And then being here in the University of Central Lancashire, we managed to build some sort of relations with the forensic department. And you can see that we do use the nanoparticles for fingerprinting. So we have a patent out of the fingerprinting materials. So you can see that the nanomaterials not only are very powerful for nanomedicine, but they could be useful for all sorts of applications. Now, I can tell you the, the way we came here today, that we started a project called multifunctional nanocomposites in clean water technology, where the magnetic nanoparticles could be you know, modified. The surface of the magnetic nanoparticles can be modified with some sort of porous structures, so the surface area can be enhanced. And with that, we had a project run with the university in Shanghai in China. And in that particular program, we brought the Feedwater Limited, which is an industrial partner. And in that particular project, you can see that we have got several uh, you know, outcomes in terms of publications and patents. Then we thought that why don't you expand this activity with respect to you know, funding body like UK India Education Research Initiative. And we had some sort of you know, pre-ideas about uh, what could be done with respect to that. And we found that some areas of India is very much you know, polluted with arsenic groundwater pollution. Okay? And that is the eastern part of India. So we approached to a different research institution in India, specifically in the eastern region. And what you can see here that we develop all sorts of materials, as I said, that you can see core cell nanoparticles, which could be silica based. Similarly, we can modify the surface of the nanoparticles with silver so that they could be antimicrobials. And you can also see that we can modify nicely the surface of the mesoporous structure so that you can have a perfect electron diffraction to say that the material is you know, crystalline with an amorphous structure, which is porous. And then we also fabricated like a membrane structure over here. You can see it's a nicely, is like a, a, is like a honeycomb structure and those materials could be very powerful for water filtration. So these are the outcome came from the Chinese project. And then we approached to this institution called Indian Institute of, uh, uh, Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science in Kolkata and Calcutta. And we run a project with a company in India, that's the Tata. Tata Chemicals Limited, and they are very powerful for making materials for water purification. And over here, we included Feedwater Limited to get involved in this particular project. So again, if you read the project titles, which is multifunctional hybrid nanocomposites for the separation of toxic and microbial contaminants from water. So we started a project with China on water technology, nano water technology. We expanded that and came up with a project with India. And that's why UKERI was involved uh, as a part of funding body. And in that particular project, we also developed some powerful materials. As I said before, you have got a membrane honeycomb structure. The difficulty for these membrane structures that they are very unstable because of the poor you know, wall structures. So they are amorphous but they are very unstable. So if you treat at high temperature under hydrothermal conditions, they usually 
you know, collapse, the structure collapse. So what we came up with an idea, why don't you make nanocrystalline zeolites to build the wall structure of those, you know, honeycomb structures. And we came up with the concept that the geolites, if, if you know geolites, they are industrially applicable for, say, petrochemical refining, but at the same time, water purification, because they have got a powerful ion exchange property. And those ion exchange properties, we can make use of that because you can build these nanoparticles of geolites based on aluminosilicate, and those geolite nanoparticles can be used as a building blocks to produce this honeycomb filter membrane. And we managed to make this one. If I actually enlarge this one, you can see how they look like in terms of their structure. You see each and every uh, walls are made up of nanocrystalline geolites. And their aluminosilicate, as I said, so they could have a very powerful ion exchange capacity. And what we have measured by using these nanocomposites made up of nanoparticles, which is geolite, they can actually remove all sorts of toxic metal ions. And we tested cadmium, we tested mercury, we tested arsenic. And this is a very noble type of materials which is very strong in terms of the hydrothermal stability. Surface area because of the microporous structures of the geolytic. Then if you go to uh, the next one, and this materials also has been tested because you have got some sort of silver nanoparticles embedded and we work with uh, the microbiology department and they found these materials are very powerful for resistance of microbial growth okay and you can see what's going on you have different materials different concentration and we found in collaboration with professor glenn morton he actually managed to show that this material actually inhibit the growth of e coli in water. So E. coli is another, you know, waterborne microorganisms present in water. And this is what we do with respect to those program. And at the end, we also uh, disseminate this particular project. We had a workshop, first international workshop, and that's why we are here as a second international workshop. And we also uh, delivered an international symposium in 2016 for three days program and you can see here we had a banquet in Manchester United and as a part of this particular conference we also have got two special you know issue one on nanomedicine and another is uh, eligible materials to the proceedings so because of this outcome we thought that why don't we go and expand our research activity in the area of nanomedicine so what we have come now and that's why we are here. We have got another project for three years, and it is actually in the very early stage of this particular project on nanomedicine, where we have an ind industrial partner again from UK, Hosoka Micron Limited, Ian, and Ian will say something about what uh, they think about this type of project. And then we have got Professor Indrajit Roy. He is from India. He is the project lead in India. He can speak about what he does after the coffee break. And also we have a a professor from a, a chest institute, they will be looking for in vivo study. So that's what we are planning to do in this particular project. And you can see that we always try to bring industry on board when we run the project. So that not only we are delivering in academic interest, also we can deliver some sort of industrial product or real applications. Now here, the aims of the projects, what I wanted to say, we discussed this morning when we had the project meeting, the specifically we want to develop magnetic nanoparticles. Those magnetic nanoparticles we know that under the influence of alternating current magnetic field, they can produce localized heat. And these magnetic nanoparticles can be localized in a specific area under the influence of an external magnetic field. So that's the idea, everybody knows that one, right? But the trouble is when you are incorporating this magnetic nanoparticle into, inside the cellular system and you want to know the distribution of those magnetic nanoparticles in a cancer cell, you must have some sort of diagnostic techniques. So we actually thought because his expertise, Professor Roy's expertise on optical sites and my expertise on magnetic sites, why don't we combine them together to form a nanocomposite which could be a hybrid having a property both magnetic and optical. And if we do so that way, then we can have a magnetic nanocomposite which has got an optical properties could be monitored using the optical microscope. And then we apply the alternating current field so that we can you know, specifically target the cancer cell. That's the idea behind the project. And this project will run until 2020. Now, if you go to the next one, 
we managed to build some interesting materials. You can have a magnetic core, and then you can have a nicely ordered mesoporous you know, shell. And these pores, you can have a pore mouth, you can fill the pores with the drug molecules or an optical tags, and then you cap the surface with some sort of you know, thermally resist, thermally sensitive uh, polymers or lipids, and then you can actually do not only optical sensing or magnetic hypothermia, you can also apply the magnetic hypothermia to melt out the surface so the drug can be released in a controlled way. So that's what we are planning to do for next three years. And here, uh, Ian, if you could come over here, so Ian can actually explain exactly Hosokoa, how they can contribute in this particular project. And then from there, he has gotten some announcement because we are trying to build some sort of network uh, with industries at the University of Central Lancashire. Ian, okay. it's your turn. Yeah? Okay. okay, thank you, Tapas. Well, from an industry point of view, one of the things that's very important is things are changing very, very quickly. The whole landscape's changing, and particularly in materials and the societal needs of these materials. So from our point of view, we manufacture and we scale up processes, and we're interested in how people can actually take things from research to production scale. And as was discussed earlier on, coming up with an idea is difficult to start with, but then the processes you've got to go through to take this into a commercial application are more and more difficult. We've had quite a lot of experience ourselves of taking our own materials to market and also working with a lot of customers who we worked in close collaboration with to take novel materials to a commercial market. So what we're really wanting to do here is work with people in a way where we can actually give some guidance in helps of what's available in terms of how we can go forward with legislative backgrounds, how we can go forward in help and what we can do to add to people's projects and not just us, there's a wider group of companies we deal with. Um, and people are always interested in new products. Now, a lot of research is done, and we had a discussion this morning about it's very interesting to create a material for a material's sake to prove something can be done, but does it have value or is it just scientific value? What we would like to be able to do is maybe influence research and directions of research by helping people realize where there is commercial value and maybe the stages of going through it and how we get to those values and how we get some actual monetization out of the research. So that's really our interest in doing it and actually helping these guys to have some focus in those ways, but also being able to promote these to other industrial companies. So that's just a brief outline of what we're interested in to do. And you want to announce something? Yeah, have you? This one, yeah. Okay, so what we'd like to say a little bit about is we have, with our involvement with UCLan and with the last symposium, realised that what we had here was something that was rather unique. And this symposium we held, and we're again looking to hold, has led to the thought of leading to a society of functional nanomaterials. The idea behind this is it's an area where industry, academia, and even industrial research people could all meet together and it would also provide a platform where people who are looking at product developments and they don't know how to develop the products and where to go could come and explain their challenges and see it. Now, the unique thing about this was the number of people that were at this symposium. As you can see from the photograph, it was quite a big group. It was a good split between industrial uh, companies and academics. And certainly, there was a very good um, internetwork of discussion during that period. So what we're saying is we would like to launch this. The society is going. There is a website available. There is information available while you're here today, and we'd be happy to talk to you about it and how we see it going forward. We want to encourage people to join as individuals, as research organisations, as industrial companies. So basically, anybody who's got an interest in nanotechnology and functional materials, this is an ideal platform for them. So we'd really like to encourage people to do it. We think it's something that's unique, and we think it's something which should have an awful lot of appeal and have a very good platform going forward. And I think particularly as things are now with the political state, as with Brexit, with manufacturing, and all the other pressures that are on us, it's a very good time to do this. So I'd like to encourage people to come forward and join us in this. Um, and the second thing is we will be holding a second um, international symposium in September. 
and we're looking again to attract a lot of academics and a lot of industrialists to this meeting and what we'd like to do is try and improve on the last event, improve by getting more people and having a more structured event. We have several themes here, we said nanomedicine, energy environment, micro and nano and manufacturing and what we're trying to do here is get a number of topics that are interesting both from the academic perspective and also from the industrialist perspective and see if we can bring some things together and some areas which are interesting to discuss and work in which are maybe non-competitive so people can actually get some advantages from the technologies and the availability and the knowledge that's there. So that's my piece. Yeah. Thank you very much Ian. I mean uh, uh, I think with that I, uh, we should would like to thank all the speakers who actually spoke before the coffee break and then you go for a coffee break and after the coffee break we have got two more speakers they can talk about what they do in their labs okay. So let's go for a coffee break and thanks to all the speakers. Yeah?